he's going to have to be intubated anyway, so we might as well do it now because we like intubating. I think that's a poor decision. I think it's risky. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing airway and breathing assessment and how you make the decision to RSI or intubate if you have the drugs, whether or not. So the typical indications for intubation would be unable to ventilate or oxygenate, unable to maintain or protect, or a anticipated clinical course. So it's important to notice that failure to oxygenate or ventilate are very different things because a patient might be able to oxygenate and not ventilate or they might be able to ventilate and not oxygenate and that might not be a indication of um, RSI. So when I was a student and I was learning when you should be doing things or not be doing things, I always was like, how do you make the decision to do this? Because it's not always, you know, clear black and white. And so I was told by some other paramedics that if they can't ventilate or oxygenate, you are RSI. It doesn't really matter what it is. If that's the case, you do it. Or if um, they can't maintain or protect, you must RSI. You know, like it's black or white. But I don't think it always is. There's there's been patients that I've taken into hospital who are GCS3 and they're, then they are lateral and the doctor at first is unhappy with me that I didn't RSI but then 10 minutes later after I had explained what is going on and why they're unconscious and what I believe is happening that they then agree that I've made the right decision. It's not always a black and white situation. So when it comes to oxygenation and ventilation, how do you assess if they are doing this or not? Well. If they are able to breathe, so ventilation is the movement of carbon dioxide in and well out of your lungs and oxygen into your lungs, and the oxygenation is the ability of the oxygen to get into the bloodstream. So if someone can't oxygenate but they can ventilate, we can put them onto CPAP and that'll probably fix the problem. So it's not always a RSI fixes or scenario when it comes to um, ventilation and oxygenation. Most times, if they can't oxygenate or ventilate well, you're going to have a very complicated RSI because you're going to have to oxygen you're going to have to oxygenate them before you paralyze them, and that can be challenging because they can't do it themselves, which means they're probably hypoxic, which means they're probably combative, which means you're going to have to probably do a delayed sequence intubation, which is something we can talk about in another video. When it comes to Maintain and protect. Maintain and, maintain and protect are two different things as well. So if they can maintain, it means that they are able to keep their tongue from falling into their airway and you can still see chest rise and they can still move air. So that's where if you put a um, capnography probe on their nose or onto the bevium that you're bagging them with and you can see a waveform, it means that they have ventilation. There is movement of carbon dioxide out. That's really helpful because if their airway closes, so does your waveform. Your waveform stops. So that's really useful to, to have and to know. Cecil breathing is when the patient tries to breathe in and the, ch and the chest of the patient goes up and the abdomen of the patient goes down. And when they breathe out, the chest goes down and the abdomen goes up. I might have had that confused a little bit, but what you see is this abdomen going up, chest going down. And when the chest goes up, the abdomen goes down. And that is Cecil breathing. And that is a clear indicator of a obstructed Airway. If they can't protect their airway, it means that if something falls into the airway, they're not going to cough or they're not going to swallow and then it falls into their lungs, they're going to aspirate. And that is a very serious thing because aspiration causes a plethora of issues. And what we need to be careful is that there's a big misconception that if they have a gag reflex, they are protecting their airway where actually that is not true. A lot of people don't have a gag reflex. And what we need to be looking out for is does a patient swallow? And if a patient can swallow, they're probably protecting their airway. So if you just watch them for a moment, you'll see them swallowing. That's a really good indicator. The other thing that you should have a lookout for is obviously if a patient can cough or a patient can talk to you, they are maintaining their airway. Protecting and maintaining aren't always the same thing. Someone might be maintaining their airway, but they're not protecting their airway. And then obviously the third one on the list is anticipated clinical cause. So let's say they have inhalation burns or let's say they've had a gunshot through the neck and it's going to swell or whatever the case is. Um, the other part of that is that uh, sometimes we have a patient who we're like, well, they're 
they're going to go into surgery and so they're going to get intubated anyway so we might as well do it my advice or my experience tells me that when we're on the roads and we've got maybe one or two partners with us and we're trying to perform a rsi it is not the safest um, place to do it when i look at risk versus benefit I would rather be RSI in a hospital on a bed surrounded by doctors and closer to, to theater than if you had the choice to do it 10 minutes later and it wouldn't have really made a difference. If it's going to make a massive difference now, then sure, go for it. Then you're not doing it for anticipated clinical cause. But if you're going, well, you know, we're, he's going to have to be intubated anyway, so we might as well do it now because we like intubating. I think that's a poor decision. I think it's risky. And I think you should rather take the patient to hospital and you can help them do the RSI and you can ask, hey, can I pass the tube because you want more, more, um, more exposure or practice? That's fine. But a, a good practitioner is going to put patient safety over anything else always hope this was helpful if you liked it please hit like and subscribe any comments just drop them down below thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video